Today, I'm going to show you how to use a displacement map in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is really cool. Anytime you need to take a, let's say today's image, we're going to be taking a logo. We're going to take the Flurn logo and I'm actually going to apply it onto a hat that has a really nice texture to it. And a displacement map is going to take the texture of that hat and apply it to the image itself, which is going to make it look like that logo was actually a part of the hat to begin with. And this works really well anytime you need to add a piece of text or a logo onto an image. Displacement maps are awesome. Let's get into today's episode. All right, so in order to use a displacement map, you'll need two different things, a text or a logo, as well as an image to put it on. So in this case, we're gonna be using the Flurn logo because it's beautiful. And uh, we're gonna be using this amazing image of this woman. <laughs> I, I just love, uh, there are no words for how awesome this picture is. So we're gonna use our move tool and I'm gonna click and drag from one image over to the other. Let's go ahead and hit F to full screen and zoom in a little bit. Now, before we get into the displacement map, I wanna warp this logo to make it look like it's actually a part of the hat. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna zoom in a little more. I'm gonna hit Control or Command T, which brings up the transform. Let's go ahead and stretch this out. And then, you know what? Let's hit, if you hit Control or Command T and then right click, you can go down here to where it says warp. And this is a really nice way to actually make something look like it's in place. In this case, I'm gonna go just take these kind of corners and, and warp them around there to make them look like they're, you know, kind of wrapping around the hat. And then we'll pull this up to make it look like it's kind of going around, around that way as well. All right, let's hit that checkbox. I'm gonna hit Command T again. We'll go ahead and, and stretch this out that way just a little bit, maybe on about that way and give a little bit of rotation. It needs to, you know, look like it's actually, like it's actually on the hat and getting warped a little bit by it. So now that we have our logo in place and it's warped and transformed to look just right in perspective, we need to go ahead and create the displacement map so we can affect the logo. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and make this guy invisible. I'm gonna click here on our channels. You're gonna have layers, channels, and paths if you're in your default view. If you don't see channels, just go to window and then down here to channels. Okay, now your job is to pick the channel that has the most contrast. So if I'm gonna click on my red channel, green channel, and blue channel, the blue channel has the most contrast. There's the most difference between light and dark. You can see red channel, not a lot of contrast because I want this show, the thread, to actually show. So we're gonna use our blue channel. This is going to create our displacement map. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Follow along. We're gonna click on our blue channel. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say duplicate channel. So we're duplicating this channel, okay? Doesn't matter what you call it, but the document here, we're gonna wanna create a new document. Okay, so it's gonna, well, it's just gonna say alpha one. You don't have a choice there. Document new and then title it whatever you want. All right, we're just going to title it displacement two, because I've already done this before. All right, so we're gonna hit okay. Cool, and if you go ahead and zoom out, you'll see that now you have a totally new document. And if we call it displacement two, that's what we have. And on our layers, we have a background layer. And if you go to your channels, we have alpha one. So it's created an alpha channel. Now, without getting into too much specifics, alpha channels are basically what make up the, an image. By default, you're gonna have a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And it's a way for Photoshop to store information about your image. So in the case of this displacement map, it's using the light and dark information on the channel to wind up creating the, the actual map itself. So all we need to do now, we've created, we've got our original document. Remember, we've clicked on the blue channel, we've duplicated that to a new document, and this is what we have. Okay, that's all there is so far. Now we're just gonna save this. So let's go to File, we'll go to Save As, okay? And we'll just call this displacement2.psd. That looks great, okay. So we have a, now this document is saved and we're ready to go back to our original document. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on our original document. I'm gonna hit F to full screen. We're gonna click RGB again, which is gonna activate all of our channels and go back to our layer. So all that was done using the channels. We're totally done with channels now. It's time to go back to layers. Okay, so we've got our background and remember this layer one where we put the logo on in place. 
Well, now it's time to use that displacement map that we just saved out. Remember, displacement2.psd. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And you can see it's not ever going to look like it actually fits because the, the edges of the Florin logo are way too, uh, they're way too crisp, right? It doesn't look like it's actually interacting with the thread itself. So that's what the displacement map does. So we're going to click on our layer one. I'm going to go up to filter. We're going to go down here to render. Nope, <laughs> distort. There we go. We're going to go to distort. And then I'm going to go over to displace. So filter, distort, and then displace. Okay, now here are your values. You want both of these to be 10. So your horizontal scale and your vertical scale, you both want to be 10. Displacement map, you want to have stretch to fit, okay? And you want to have undefined areas to repeat edge pixels. Now, if you're using a document that's the exact same size as your background document, these don't really matter. And you should be using that because we created the displacement map from the background. So just keep these where they are and you should be good to go. Hit OK. And now it's going to ask you for your displacement map. It even says on the top there, choose your displacement map. OK, we're going to click on displacement2.psd because we just made that. And I'm going to hit open. Then it's going to work magic, and it's going to give us this, which is really, really cool. Basically, what it does is it takes all the edges that are here on my image, and it converts them. It actually modifies this layer to make it look like we're blending into the threads. You can see it, it kind of looks like there's a, a high point, a low point, a high point, and a low point to make it look like it's part of the threads. And there you can see, zoomed out a little bit, it really does look like it's a part of the hat. So this is great. We're going to take a couple steps more, and then it's going to really look like it's integrated. All right, so now what we're going to do is make the logo actually look like it's interacting with the hat, because I want to be able to see the threads through the logo. And for that, we're going to use different blending modes. So we're starting off here on normal. We have a lot of different options, but the ones that are really going to do a nice job blending are right here in the overlay group. So overlay, soft light, and hard light, these are going to be the primary ones that I choose when I'm looking for a different effect. So let's go ahead and stick with overlay. And there we go. We can see how the edges now look like they're actually integrated with the hat, and I can see the fabric through the logo itself. Now, from here, if we wanted to lower the opacity, you can click and drag here to go either way. Or, you know what, if I wanted to make this white instead of black, because it's black, all I have to do is invert it, which is Control or Command I. That's going to invert it. And then, you know what, let's change that down to something like soft light. And then we could lower our opacity there, and you would see that a little bit better. So we have a lot of different options here. But you know what, I think I liked it dark again. So let's keep it dark, and let's bring our opacity up. There we go, so we can actually see it. So when you guys watch this episode, you're not like, I can't even see that. What are you talking about? Um, by the way, did I mention how awesome this photo is? I, <laughs> it may be photo of the year. It's beautiful. And that's how we use displacement maps to create a logo on an image and apply that texture and actually change the border to make it look like the logo was placed there. That's it for today's episode, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, learning about some displacement maps. The next time you go to add some text or a logo to an image and you want that texture to actually transfer over, displacement maps are the perfect way to go. And if you love photography and Photoshop like I do, just hit that subscribe button on your screen now. You can receive free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week from Flurn. Com. And if you have an idea about a new episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you. We'll do our best to answer your questions. Thanks again, guys, and we'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. So for this episode, all right. So, all right. So for this ex... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so in order to use a displacement map... In order to use a display... Blah, blah, blah. In order to... You you're going to need two different things. You're going to need... So in order to use a displacement... You're going to need... You'll need, we need to create a displacement map. All right. All right. Thanks, Grandma. You did an awesome job.